Hey guys, today we're talking about factoring polynomials. Now remember from yesterday, we looked at multiplying polynomials. So factoring is kind of the reverse of multiplication. Remember if two things multiply together to give you the product like two and three multiply to give you six, then we say two and three are the factors of six. So that's essentially what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at taking a polynomial and pulling out smaller polynomials. All right, so factoring polynomial, simply rewriting a polynomial as a product of two or more of its factors in factored form. Then you write each factor out as a product. The greatest common monomial factor is simply the monomial with the highest degree and greatest coefficient that evenly divides all terms of the polynomial. That will make more sense here in just a minute when we do some examples. And then finally, a prime polynomial is irreduci irreducible. This polynomial is misspelled, polynomial that cannot be factored. So for example, above we said two times three is equal to six. Six is not prime, however, three is prime. And so is two, because it cannot be factored any further. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. We're going to learn a few different methods for factoring polynomials. And the first method is known as the greatest common factor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the greatest common factor within uh, the terms of the polynomial. Then we're going to pull that factor out by doing kind of this reverse distribution property. So example one has 12x squared minus 4x. I notice that there is an x in both terms and I notice that both terms are also divisible by four. So 4x is the greatest common factor that I can pull out of both of these terms. So I'm gonna put a 4x out there in front and then I'm gonna open a set of parentheses up. And if I were to divide 12x squared by 4x, the remaining amount would be 3x. Likewise, if I were to take a negative 4x and divide it by 4x, the remaining amount would be negative one. So my two factors that create this polynomial 12x squared minus 4x is our 4x times 3x minus one. Now you can check your work by doing the distribution property. So if I were to distribute that 4x back in, I should end up with my original polynomial. All right, let's try example two, which is a little bit more complex. I'm gonna look across my terms here. I have a three terms. Uh, it looks like all the coefficients are divisible by three. And I see that I also have x and a y in each term. However, it looks like x to the first and y to the first are the largest powers that are factored into each term. So I'm gonna pull out a three xy. I'm gonna open up my set of parentheses now. I'm gonna look at this first term. If I were to divide it by three xy, I would have a remaining amount of x squared. And if I were to take a positive 18 xy and divide it by three xy, the remaining amount I'd have is six. And then nine xy squared, if I were to divide that by three xy, I would have the remaining amount of three y. So here are my two factors uh, that produce this polynomial, three x cubed y plus 18 x y plus nine x y squared, uh, factored out using the greatest common factor. All right, our next method, actually our next two methods really rely on patterns. So being able to identify a pattern that a polynomial fits into will help us factor it. And here's the pattern uh, for two such cases. These are known as the binomial square factoring. So you'll notice that you have a trinomial, there's three terms, and the first term is a perfect square, and the last term is a perfect square. The middle term here is two times the square root of A and B. So that's what we're gonna look for here, and this gives you a little helpful reminder here. First term's perfect square, third term's perfect square, the middle term is two times the square root of the first and the third. So let's put that into practice here in example three. We have a trinomial. My first term's a perfect square. My last term's a perfect square. And the middle term is two times the square root of x squared and the square root of four. That's two times two x. So what that means is it's going to follow this little pattern right here. So I'm gonna take that first term, which is x squared. I'm gonna take the square root of it to get x. And I'm gonna take the square root of that last term, which is two, and it is x plus two squared. All right, well, let's see if we can recognize the pattern here in example four. I now have an x squared minus six x plus nine. So the difference is now is that second term is minus. 
And the way that that uh, relates to my end uh, factored form is that these two terms will be subtracted from each other. All right, my first term and my last term are both perfect squares. My middle term here is negative two times x times three. So this is going to fall into that pattern of x minus three squared. All right, let's check out this middle one here. I see that my middle term is a positive. So that means I'm going to follow this first pattern. And this first term is a perfect square. If I take the square root of four x squared, I get two x. If I take the square root of one, I get one. And because this is a positive in the middle, I know that there's a positive between those two terms and it is two x plus one squared. Now, just to check our work here, if I were to square x minus three, that would be x minus three times x minus three. And if I were to do my distribution property back to that, I would have x squared minus three x minus, th whoops, minus three x uh, and then plus nine. And so you can see here, if I combine the minus three x and the minus three x, I end up with this negative six x. So I am factoring this properly and I'm checking my work here by uh, doing my distribution property back to it. Okay, our last example here for this one is we have a minus now, a minus term here in the middle. This first term is a perfect square. The last term is a perfect square. So I'm gonna take the square root of both of those. That's 5D and 10. And because there's a minus, I'm gonna put a minus between those two terms. And 5D minus 10 squared is the factored form for this polynomial. All right, our next pattern here that we need to recognize is known as the difference of squares. Now, this is definitely different because we start off with a binomial, so just two terms. However, both of those terms are going to be perfect squares, as you can see here in our little checklist. And the main thing uh, that will be true about this is that there's going to be a subtraction between those two perfect squares. So example five, we see we have two perfect squares here, a subtraction between the two of them, and it's going to follow this a plus b, a minus b, which means we'll take the square root of both of these two terms so 2x and 4, and it's going to follow this 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 4. Now it doesn't matter which order you list them in, it could have been 2x minus 4 times 2x plus 4. Either way will work. All right, example 6 has more practice just like this. Let's start by taking the square root of both terms. That gives me 5y minus 3 times 5y plus 3. And there's my factored form for that first one there. Uh, our next middle example here, we're gonna take the square root of both terms. We get x squared minus four times x squared plus four. Now, at this point, you should recognize something, that this first term here factored down into the same pattern that we used to factor the first polynomial, which means we can factor this further. This, is, again, is the difference of perfect squares. So this first term now gets factored down to x minus two times x plus two times x squared plus four. So we've now found three factors for this polynomial here. All right, our last one here and for this example says uh, we have 36 a squared minus 49 b squared. If we take the square root of both of those, we'll get six a minus seven b and 6a plus 7b. All right, I'm half smiling and laughing because one of my kiddos is upstairs just screaming for mom because he can't find the soap for the shower or something. All right, let's move into our final example here for factoring. Factor the following using the rules just given. Hey, I'm making a video. Let's see if they got that. All right, we got 10y cubed minus 5y squared plus 15y. So we do have a trinomial here, but it doesn't fit into one of the patterns that we found. So I need to look for a common factor. There, in fact, is a common factor I can pull out of each one of these. Uh, I'm gonna pull out a 5y, and when I do that, I'll be left with 2y squared minus y plus three. So there's my factored form here of this first polynomial. Number two, I see that I have a difference in a binomial, and these are both perfect squares. 
So I'm going to factor that following that pattern we just learned. 3z minus bc times 3z plus bc. All right, number three here, we have three terms. Both the first term and the last term are perfect squares, and there's a plus between those. So that means that's going to factor down into x squared plus 6 squared. All right, and finally, again, a binomial. There's a subtraction between the two of them, so and they are both perfect squares. So I'm going to take the square root of both of those. That's 8x minus 9y and 8x plus 9y. All right, that's all for the video. I better go see if my kiddo is okay in the shower.